I think subscription. I mean, it's been an interesting four years. When we started talking about subscription four years ago, it was viewed as the anathema, the death of the music industry, that turning music into a service from being a product was going to be you know, a disaster. I don't think subscription is going to totally supplant the selling of individual physical product. I think you'll still be buying CDs or DVDs about music for a long time, but it's about offering choice. And we've basically had a value proposition up until three years ago where we'd ask you to go to Tower Records and buy the new Coldplay CD. And if you didn't want to buy it, we had nothing else to sell you. Now it's about saying, do you want to buy the digital download of, of Fix You from iTunes? Do you want to go to Rhapsody and listen to the entire X plus Y album on Rhapsody in an all-you-can-eat model where you're, there's no barrier to enjoying the music? You're paying a monthly fee. You're paying somewhere between 10 and $15 a month, depending on the service. That you, well, actually, with Yahoo now, between 5 and $15 a month to have access to all the music you could possibly ever want to listen to. There are up to 2, 3 million tracks on these services. And now you might discover music that you didn't know you actually wanted to purchase. So it's not an either or proposition. It's not like, well, if you have subscription, you're never going to buy music again. You're actually going to find music through subscription services, through this all you can eat buffet. You're going to end up running into music that you never would have made the conscious decision to plunk down $9.99 for the album or 99 cents for the single because you hadn't become familiar with it enough. Subscription allows you to enjoy a lot more music. Be it, It's gives the opportunity to new artists not to have that barrier of you have to buy my music before you enjoy it. Subscription allows people to experience almost virtually all the music that's ever you know been made available. Yes, we still don't have the live Dave Matthews show that was recorded by a guy with a cassette recorder that he held up at a show in Pittsburgh three years ago, but we're going to get there. We're going to figure out a way. It's, it's going to take a while, but we'll figure out a way to take what's referred to commonly as gray product, stuff that might have been user-created, stuff where people recorded it themselves at a show. We, we moved far enough that uh, there's a new Beastie Boys movie coming out. And it'll be, debu it'll, I guess it'll debut at Sundance, or they're starting to already advertise it, I think, for Academy mm -hmm. consideration here. There'll be a limited screening here in Los Angeles. But the movie is made up completely of fan-generated footage from cell phones, from little camcorders, still pictures taken with cell phones, videos taken off of cell phones, people with Hi8 cameras. And what they did was they solicited the audience to come to the show and do all the filming they want and just give the band a copy of it. From that, one of the guys, and I can't remember who, sat for a year and edited together all this fan-generated footage. And it's coming out as, hey, it's our movie. Or it's, it's an interesting name like that. I can't remember what the name is, but it's basically, it's the first user-generated full-length film. Wow. And so it's pretty cool. So I think over the next year, we're going to see a lot of user-generated content, a lot of user-generated music mashups. I mean, you know, we at EMI were very concerned when the Grey album came along. DJ Danger Mouse taking the Beatles' White Album and the Jay-Z Black Album and mashing it up and turning it into the Grey Album. Out of that, though, came, I think, after a period of discomfort, came a lot of interesting ideas of how to, how to approach music differently. Uh, it's funny that it ended up that DJ Danger Mouse was then hired by the Gorillas to produce their new album that's done very well this year. So I think the, the, the mindset of the labels is changing. I think the mindset of everybody is changing in terms of how to embrace the disruption instead of how do we fight the disruption, how do we defeat the disruption. I think it's more how do we embrace it, how do we exploit it in all the positive ways, and how do we turn it into new businesses.